day four of fast forward challenge day four of our 21 day fasting journey we've talked about the fever of fasting we've talked about also um, the importance of you know not paying attention to your moods and not to be a carnal christian but to be a spiritual christian we talked about so many other things in the last um, three days already uh, concerning fasting where is my um, notes so we've talked about how fasting is an affliction of your soul we talked about how um, fasting is uh, the fever of fasting, as I mentioned already, how fasting disconnects us from the world and prayer connects us to God. And today I want to take just one step closer as well and talk to you about what to do when you don't know what to do. One of the reasons why many of us even are fasting right now is because we are looking for God's direction for our life, for God's direction this year, for God's direction um, honestly in this decade and I want to show you how fasting will be used of God to help us redirect our lives. The story comes from Apostle Paul and Apostle Paul is on the way to Damascus and it's in chapter 9 book of Acts. He encounters the Lord and in his encounter with the Lord he asked two questions. The first question he says is, Who are you, Lord? And the second question is, Lord, what would you have me do? I believe that the quality of your life will be determined by the quality of your questions. So many people think that Christian life is about having the answers. I believe Christian life is also about having the right questions. And when you encounter Jesus, when you go into your secret place, when you pray, when you spend time with the Holy Spirit, when you read God's Word, I want you to have these two questions during these 21 days. Lord, who are you? And Lord, what would you have me do? Lord, who are you? And Lord, what would you have me do? I believe that these are two very important questions because in these questions the Lord is going to start answering them. Now I want you to notice how the Lord answered these questions for Paul because you're going to see the part about fasting in here. Um, who are you? God answered right away. Jesus says, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Meaning, I'm not, you're not persecuting a false Messiah. You're actually persecuting your Messiah. And you know, Paul didn't persecute Jesus per se. He persecuted his followers. And I think in that day, he discovered something very amazing about Jesus. Is Jesus is so deeply connected to his followers that when you persecute his followers, you are persecuting Christ. And that's why people who say, I love Jesus, but I don't like church. You know, that, that's, not, that's not biblical. You can't decapitate Jesus from His body. You can't disconnect Jesus from His body. And what happens with many people is that they need to rediscover Jesus, not just as Jesus who, um, you know, died for them, loves them, but also as Jesus who loves the church, loves the body. And so I believe that during this fast, the Lord will help you to reveal different facets of His nature, of His character, and of His love for you. And make sure that you just open yourself up to receive that. But the second question Paul is asking, and that was this, Lord, what should I do? And this question wasn't answered directly. Jesus didn't tell Paul what to do. He told him where to go. He told him to go to the right place and that he will bring the right people who will tell him the right direction. Come on, let's drop that in the comments. The Lord said to go to the right place where he will meet the right people, where he will be told the right direction. 
a lot of us we want to know where to go meaning what to do but sometimes even as you're fasting right now as you are praying I want to let you know that God will lead you to your right thing to do what you need to do this year should you take this job should you move should you marry this person when you're when you're like on the fence you're not sure he will take you to the right place and I believe that place for Paul it was actually a place in Damascus and it was a spiritual place as well of fasting and praying because when God spoke to Ananias to go to Paul and tell him what he must do God said this to Ananias that in Acts 9 11 behold he is praying and Acts 9 9 two verses before that it says and Paul he was there three days without sight neither ate nor drunk meaning for three days Paul is blind he's not sure where to go he's physically blind as well but he's I believe for the first time in his life he doesn't know what to do with his life he doesn't know what do I do I mean I just had this encounter with Jesus I'm having 180 turnaround what do I do now with my life and the Lord when he encountered him he says go to the right place and he says I will send the right people to the right place God doesn't send the right people if you're in the right not in the right place so many people meet wrong people because they themselves are not in the right place when you're not in a place of prayer when you're not in a place of fasting when you're not in a place of a local church you can miss God sending right people you may say I don't need Ananias I just want God to speak directly to me but one of the reasons God was teaching Paul and he will teach you and I to depend on other believers is because a lot of us we struggle with independence we view relationship with God as just one-way street we don't view that it's also this way as well love God love people Jesus is not just the head he also has a body Paul persecuted Christians and Jesus says you persecuting me and so I believe that the Lord causes our life to depend on other believers on older believers more mature believers on pastors on teachers and people like um, some of you who are you know right now receiving the benefit from this ministry God created us to be in a community God didn't create us to be an island we're not lone rangers you're not supposed to live Christian life alone and sometimes he hides specifics of where you should be in people's lives who you maybe have been ignoring and so the Lord tells Paul he says go to the right place in the right place I will send you the right people who will tell you the right things to do so I want to encourage you as you're praying right now as you're fasting and maybe one of the things that you are believing God for this year is in the area of your ministry, in the area of your family, in the area of what should I do with this, with that, and with this. Find yourself in the right place. Stay in that place. That place is a place of prayer. That place is a place of fasting. Even if you're blind, you're not sure where to go it's okay stay in the right place God will send you right people sometimes those people will be, come in the form of a pastor a minister they could come in the form of me coming into your life every single day and encouraging you God will send the right people in the form of a mentor in the form, in the form of a spiritual father and a lot of times these people will come into your life like Ananias and they will speak into your life prophetically they will speak sometimes not just prophetically but they will speak practically they will help you to get anchored in your foundation because Paul had to get water baptized you know he had this amazing calling upon his life and Paul had this amazing purpose I mean he's supposed to write so much of the New Testament he's supposed to plant churches yet Paul is not baptized yet 
Paul needed to experience physical healing. Scales needed to fall off his eyes. Paul needed to get filled with the Holy Spirit. So some of the basics needed to be covered. Bef and, and I think that a lot of us were so busy and so eager and impatient to save the world, change the world, and get, you know, like our business going, get our marriage, get our 12 children, you know, uh, plant the church very quickly. And we, we rush many times without getting the basics being covered and foundations being laid. And foundations are laid when you spend, them. again, I'm going to come back to the place, right place, which is prayer and fasting and being grounded and planted in the local church. God sends you the right people who a lot of times will help you to get the foundations. The foundations of Bible reading, the foundations of water baptism, the foundations of being Spirit-filled. And I know that you're like, no, 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 I just want to know like what business should I start? I just want to know which house should I buy? I just want to know right now like should I have one child or five children? You know, should I start a church or should I move from a church or should I, should, what should I do? And God is not impatient. God usually is slower than our impatience because He's about developing us. He's about grounding us and He's about rooting us in Him. And you know that right place for Paul was a place of prayer and place of fasting and place of dependence, not in overly dependent, but in place of being connected to other believers. Believers Paul persecuted. Believers Paul hated. Believers Paul, he was encouraging people who were stoning Stephen and now he's relying on them. Yes, Paul had visions to heaven. God spoke to him. God did gave him such a great revelations that he needed a thorn in the flesh to keep him from being proud. Yet the early stages of his life, even later stages of his life, Paul always walked in community with other believers. And this can be a word for somebody because when COVID happened, some of you, you fell out of a habit to be in the community with believers. And maybe you're fasting right now, you're praying and you're like, I don't need a local church. I don't need a small group. I just need me and the Bible. Christians have disappointed me. I got hurt by Christians and I barely survived the church hurt and I am not going to go back to church. If you're confused about your calling, this might be essential. As a Christian, it's essential to be praying, to be fasting and to be planted. And then God sends the right people. They can come in the form of a prophet, apostle, uh, minister. Um, they can come in the form of um, a young man, an older man, and speak things prophetically into your life that will change the trajectory of your life. And then they help you to build your foundations. But still, Paul didn't start after that planting churches. Still, Paul didn't start right away writing epistles. Paul just started to preach. So he prayed in the right place, he fasted in the right place, he was planted, meaning he was connected to other believers, and he started to build his foundations and then he started to preach. Started to preach everywhere he could. And then one thing led to another, he was entrusted with more responsibility. And then one thing led to another, he starts his first missionary trip. Then he starts his second, second missionary trip. Then he starts his third missionary trip. And then we see miracles, signs and wonders. We see grace of God increasing in Paul's ministry. And then he starts, you know, he ends up in jail. So you would think, oh, it's such a detour to his calling. But it's not. Paul actually ends up writing a lot of the New Testament in prison. We call them prison letters. So God even uses the delays in his life, the seeming distractions or the seeming de detours to still fulfill his purpose. Because see, that's what happens when you have find yourself in the right place. When you find yourself in the place of prayer, in the place of fasting, in the place of being planted, you're dealing with the hurts, maybe resentment, bias that you have toward local church. And then you begin to build your foundations. And then you begin to preach the gospel. You begin to tell other people about Jesus. And then you begin to slowly move. Sometimes 
you can know exactly what to do. Like my biggest challenge with people who are saying, hey, I don't know what to do, is that when you find what you, you can do or what you need to do, a lot of times you actually cannot do it right away. Like when you find, hey, I, I now need to, know, to, do, to do this, it will take you such a long time of preparation before you actually step in the fullness of that. And so everything about the Lord, I really have learned that it, it's just about being patient and it's about being connected to Him through prayer, through fasting and not to be discouraged when I am blind, when I'm not sure, when I'm not seeing the light, what to do next, but to be patient that God will send the right people. Sometimes those people will come in the form of friends, ministers, and they will speak something, sparks of fire. Oh man, wow, this is incredible. But not always you're able to do anything about it. You actually have to now, you, it's almost like you got pregnant. And now you have to carry this to, to fullness by submitting to God's process of development, submitting to God's process of maturing you and that you are faithful with the small things and then you begin to step into the fullness of that calling. So if you are in that place right now and part of this fast, part of this prayer season you're taking is to know God's will. I just shared with you some of the most practical things honestly I've experienced in my life concerning knowing God's direction in fasting in through fasting. Amen. Now let's go through just a um, little encouragement today on day four of fasting and day four of fasting has a health tip which will show up today as well on our social media platform but day four has the fasting um, and let me read for you and that is typically about day three to five on a fast, the body understands that there is no food intake and begins to shut down the production of digestive juices in order to conserve energy. At this point, you may no longer experience hunger for some days. Like, um, I feel the same, you know, that pretty much don't feel hunger anymore, feel very, you know, good physically and that's usually the time that most of us kind of look forward to in the fast that's why a lot of you who quit your fast all the time you you don't get a chance to experience that and if you fast um, if you end the fast every single day you don't get a chance to experience that as well but nevertheless don't give up um, this is not to discourage you this is just we're letting you know that there are benefits of going for an extended period on water so let's take a moment right now and pray and then I'm going to answer some some of your questions I know quite a few of you sharing your experience in the comments right now so I'm gonna address some of those things and share um, answer some questions but right now let's uh, take a time to pray um, ask the Holy Spirit to um, just give you greater desire to pursue Him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you today that for everyone that is fasting, for everyone that is right now um, on a day four of this fast, uh, maybe for those that are just joining, for those that are maybe already on day eight, Lord, and they feel tired physically, and they feel and the flesh is weak, but the Spirit is willing. Lord, may you strengthen their desire. May you strengthen, God, to get through um, this process of um, discomfort, Lord, to, to that smooth sailing where we can feel better physically, where we can think uh, more clear mentally, and where we can also experience you more richly. Lord, I pray that you will begin to reveal Jesus to us, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, may, ho may Jesus become more real to us. That's our desire, that we will know you. Uh, Holy Spirit, I ask you that you will also help us to be in the right place. Sometimes we want you to send the right people, but we are not in the right place. Help us to get to the right place of prayer, humility, waiting, being patient, and also being trusting that you got us, that you haven't forsaken us, Lord. Even if we are confused about what tomorrow holds, let us know that you're the one that holds the tomorrow. Lord, I ask you also that you will send the right people to our life. 
Send the right people into our life, Lord, that need to speak the right words. People that will help us to ground ourselves in our foundation. Send us to the small group that we need to be spiritually covered and spiritually partnering with other believers that we are not doing Christian life alone. Lord, I ask you that you will also help us to cover our bases, um, getting water baptized, reading your word, um, getting filled with the Holy Spirit, and preaching the gospel, making disciples, Lord. As we are, as you're revealing to us, Lord, in dreams, in visions, through prophetic insight, the scope of our calling, that we will not be in the hurry to try to see it utilized right away. Lord, but that we will be patient to take one day at a time, one month at a time, one year at a time, to move closer and closer to your will that you have for us so that we will fulfill your will on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, somebody drop the prayer emoji in the chat if you receive this prayer. If you are just tuning in and we have about a thousand four hundred of us right now live, um, don't forget to hit thumbs up to the video on YouTube. Um, it can help with the algorithm as well as um, uh, like the video. If um, this was a blessing to you, we have a book. Um, this book is called Fast Forward. Um, and so make sure that you check it out. Um, it's on Amazon and this book we also have on my website which you can download free of charge and um, there's a reading plan that goes with it. There's also a prayer plan that you can take your um, children through as well and um, they could be a part of this during your fast. I want to say again huge thank you to every person who has left a review to the book whether it's on Amazon or on Audible. It means a lot and we very much appreciate it. Um, now I'm going to answer some questions. I am going to leave, uh, we're going to right now uh, put the donation links on, uh, pin the donation links on our YouTube and our Facebook. If God puts on your heart, I know that in the last three days I didn't mention anything about giving but if the Lord puts on your heart to give or um, you have in your heart to give uh, this also is a great opportunity to sow spiritually um, and so financially and so um, you can do that um, these funds will go to help us spread the ministry ministry of translating content producing e-courses and making um, videos I mean all of the media stuff that we do um, as well as a lot of content that we offer free of charge we have a very big team very good team and because of this team we're able to do this so thank you so much for those of you who are giving and who are partnering so we very much appreciate it um, somebody's saying I am so let's go through some questions <clears throat> Today I am more tired than yesterday. Folks said I have more energy, but I don't. Maybe because I'm drinking fresh, fresh vegetables juice. Yes, it could be. Uh, the moment you drink a lot of juices, you must understand is that, you know, you keep, I'm going to use the layman's terms, you keep waking up your stomach and so it doesn't go to sleep. And a lot of times your hunger really never goes away. So um, that's why I personally, avoid drinking juices. I'm not against juice fast but um, the hunger really is going to be there um, because if you're drinking a lot of vegetable fresh, fresh juices your hunger is not going to be there. It's, it's going to be there and so um, it will kind of not um, leave. So that's personally my recommendation is to do water only but if you need juices God bless you um, and if you want to keep your stomach you know, asleep, then you definitely want to do less of those um, juices, especially, um, yeah, because if you put in too much calories, you wake up your stomach. Why is it so hard to pray suddenly? Normally, I don't have the problems with that. Yesterday and today, I started to doubt the whole fast. Oh, <laughs> welcome to Fasting 101. So sometimes that happens actually. And um, I've experienced that. Um, many times. So a few things that I do. When I cannot pray during a fast or I feel like I just can't break through, especially if I'm doing a prolonged fast, um, I don't get discouraged anymore. I actually just go and I read the Word. And I read the Word until it speaks and then I just try to speak to God about what I've read. And if I honestly like so down, I am so down, then I just worship. Or if I can't even, there were times 
I was so physically tired, I actually felt like I couldn't open my mouth. So I just turned on music and I just sat there and I just spent time in God's presence. And so, or I would listen to a message, I would listen to a podcast or like a video like this that will kind of help me and encourage me. And so, but uh, be of good cheer, don't give up, it will pass. You will see this, will, if you don't give up, it will pass. And so, um, don't, don't let that throw you off. And so sometimes during a fasting, you experience that temptation, the enemy uh, attacking your mind with those thoughts. And so um, when, when you don't feel God's presence, feed on His promises. You just read the Word. Read the Word. You know, read a little bit of a uh, fast forward book. And just find that encouragement. Do not give up. Um, your feelings and your mood is not the best indicator of God's presence in your life. Jesus' Word is the indicator. And He says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And so that's where actually your faith is maturing now that you don't feel anything. Um, and now you can mature when you're not motivated. And so that's where real maturity is being built. Because maturity is not being built when you're motivated all the time. But when you're not feeling it, that's when the maturity is being built. How do I know if it's the right place? Well, uh, very simple. Right place is what? It's prayer, it's fasting, and it's being planted in the local church. And so that, that's the right, right place, you know, and of course also reading God's Word. Hello Vlad, do you know what difficult it is to believe in the realm of the Spirit? I'm not sure I understand um, that question. Um, our faith is in God, our faith is not in our faith. So um, it's difficult to believe when we believe in belief instead of believing in Jesus. Jesus always called people to believe in Him, um, not just to believe in something just He teaches. He told us to practice what He teaches, but He told us to trust in Him. Is herbal tea okay? Yeah, I don't see. Um, even like I was watching one of the doctors um, yesterday sharing about a prolonged fast and he said, you know, uh, water, definitely a lot of water, tea or even coffee um, is completely fine as long as it's of course in the smaller measures you don't want to drink too much of that um, and then water with electrolytes and stuff so that's where kind of you want to have some of the vitamins sea salt in the water especially if you're going to go for 21 days on water fast you want to add a little bit more of uh, electrolytes and sea salt in your water but if you drink um, hot tea or herbal tea I don't see a problem with that uh, what is going to the bathroom like? Is the area normal? Sorry if it's... Um, so <clears throat> sometimes in the beginning stages of the fast you can experience that, a lot of flushing out that happens um, in your body. Um, I know that I've experienced that um, even during this fast in the first um, two days. Uh, partially is because um, the night before I, um, I ate and I have a feeling that I should have not ate, eaten that meal. But my wife tempted me and um, so we we ate both of us and uh, and as I as I have eaten that <clears throat> okay so this is gonna be a confession time okay I went to Taco Bell uh, the day before fasting um, and I was like sick for you know like almost half a week so I barely ate I ate very little soups there and there so it was a good preparation for the fast and then um, you know my wife was craving a Taco Bell and so I took her to Taco Bell and man that that weakness pre prevailed over me so I I don't know some some kind of a chalupa I ate some kind of a chalupa and um, yeah next two days um, all of that chalupa was um, well I was being delivered <laughs> let's just say that all of that chalupa was coming out okay and um, yeah and it was a lot of also diarrhea but partially is because of Taco Bell chalupa so uh, Lana baby I'm sorry but that chalupa was not God's direction. You are not the right person who lead me to Taco Bell. Um, transformation, not Taco Bell. Amen. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that's what I would um, encourage. That sometimes it's normal. Now, if it continues after even three, four days, then um, you might want to go see the doctor. Any tips besides electrolytes to help women from too much hair falling out? Um, uh, they have other vitamins um, as well that you can take. Um, so um, for to help you with fasting I wonder if you have this hair falling out just during the fasting or it's just a normal thing that you have so because if it's a normal thing then I, I don't think that it will f fix it um, and so uh, just take other vitamins as well that you need 
I'm doing water only. You said coconut water is fine. How about lemon water and other percent fruit juices that I squeeze myself? Um, it, it's completely up to you. Um, I, I wouldn't start adding a lot of fruit juices. Um, I'm not saying that you can't um, to add a little bit of fruit juices, but the moment you start drinking a lot of juices, um, again, it, it goes back to that, that it, um, <clears throat> You can wake up your stomach, number one. Number two is that I feel like you're not going to find as much benefits uh, to the fast, um, even physically, though for some people it really helps to um, replenish with some of the nutrients that they're losing because of fasting through juices. So it's it's, it's a gray area and just kind of follow your follow the leading of the Lord. Uh, coconut water is nice. I have a difficult time drinking coconut water because I feel like if I drink a lot of it, um, there was a time when I was fasting and I drank a lot of coconut water and it just made me a little bit sick. So um, sent me to the bathroom a lot. So I just drink, I haven't drank any coconut water this time. And so, um, but you can, you can drink a little bit of coconut water and add a little bit of lemon um, into your water. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, they do discourage to drink apple cider vinegar while fasting. Um, for a long time. I watched one of the doctors yesterday talking about a prolonged uh, fast who talks a lot about fasting and so he um, discouraged that. Um, I know some people try to use apple cider vinegar to try to cleanse their system you know while fasting and so uh, it might be good for a few days but if you're gonna go for 21 days it might not from his understanding uh, and perspective of a doctor he discouraged that. Uh, Matthew 6 18 can we or should we tell others about our fasting if we need to I think if we need if you need to you can tell others about your fasting but if you don't need to um, you don't need to tell other people you don't need to post it online unless you're like in a fasting group and you're sharing your experience that otherwise because everybody there is kind of you know we're like in one boat and so we're encouraging each other that's a different story but um, you don't need to blast it to the world or Bl brag about it or blow your own horn about fasting because that's the purpose of it is to do it so that the Father sees you fasting not so that everybody sees you fasting. You don't want your reward of fasting to be the fact that people think you're super spiritual and so you want your reward of fasting to be that uh, you get God's attention and so I would ha highly highly encourage to um, make as little um, and make as light of your fasting in a sense not to try to uh, brag about it, um, tell everybody about it or even walk around like now you're you know floating on the sky because you're fasting and stuff. So just, it's just a normal habit of Christians that Christians should take part in even though the Bible doesn't encourage us to do long fasts for everyone but it's beneficial. have not been to the toilet for three days. Is this a problem for health? So I'm not a doctor. I don't know um, if you're feeling good. Praise God. Um, so yeah, I, I don't have much say to it. If you feel sick, then that's a different story. But if you feel good, it's okay. Maybe you don't have anything bad there anyway. Um, okay, somebody asked about the apple cider. I just addressed that. I've been struggling to get to sleep at night and also waking up in the morning. Is that normal? Um, I would add uh, mineral salt um, to your water. Um, if you're doing a water fast, it will help with um, sleeping. But sometimes it's possible that you will have a difficult time to fall asleep. And so um, take the time, don't, don't try to force yourself, especially if your job allows you to kind of flex the flexibility. So just read, read, pray. Um, and then if you wake up earlier, you know, you um, just spend more time with the Lord. And sometimes it's the opposite. You actually will become more sleepy um, because you're, you know, especially the first few days. Just take more time to rest. Body aches and pains today. Is that normal? Yeah, that could be normal. Third day, fourth day, um, just kind of that. So just you can persevere, drink, uh, stay hydrated, um, get some rest um, and persevere. What do you think about tithing? I think that tithing is an Old Testament uh, principle that is very good for us to practice today. I practice it. Um, I know a lot of people who practice it. And um, in the Bible, in the New Testament, the Bible uh, it mentions tithing, but it um, mainly focuses on uh, sacrifice because the discipleship uh, model for giving is um, the standard, or I would say the minimum is 50%. 
um, if you look at like what Jesus asked his followers to follow him, a lot of them gave everything. Um, you know, Zacchaeus gave half of his income. Um, the rich ruler, Jesus told him to give everything. And so I always say to people that the following of Jesus is actually um, way higher requirements when it comes to giving than the Old Testament law. So the only thing is that Jesus doesn't demand of us. He produces a change in our heart that results in us living for eternity and living extravagantly generous as we are able to. The New Testament teaching focuses more on, um, you know, set aside uh, something to give and then to give as you purpose in your heart, not without, not under compulsion. So, but I believe in the, in the practice and in the tradition or the ritual of tithing. I think it's a great spiritual discipline that every person um, should take advantage of. That's just my my thing. But um, the, in the New Testament, um, the focus is on generosity and actually extravagant, sacrificial generosity. That's what Jesus kind of goes for, not just a 10% tithing. And so, and that's what my aim. I want to start with tithing. I want to keep tithing as my baseline, but I want to keep striving to that New Testament principle that Jesus constantly kept referring to. Vlad, have you ever done a fast without food and water? Um, no, I have not. I have never fasted without water. I know some people who do that. They call they call it dry fast. Um, you know, for a day. I know that three days without water and without food is not recommended. More than three days, um, unless you're supernaturally uh, fasting. But I've never done that. Um, the biblical definition of uh, fasting is abstaining from food, not abstaining from water. Um, though there were fasts in the Bible without water and without food, like Paul. We read actually about Paul. He didn't drink or eat for three days. Um, so, but I don't uh, recommend that and I don't uh, practice that. It's just personal conviction. What about energy drinks during the fast? Energy drinks are very bad for you um, overall, like not just during a fasting. Like you shouldn't be drinking energy drinks or soda because there's, they have so much sugar and um, you, you want to avoid those drinks. And if it's one thing that you need to lay on the altar and that is, you know, soda and energy drinks, they're, they're very, very damaging. And so I think you should not only sacrifice that during fasting, um, but you should, you should completely get rid of that from your diet and um, your body in the future will thank you for that. All right, guys, thank you so much for um, staying with me. There's still um, a thousand of you, um, a thousand of you on YouTube. Um, so we have about 767 that have uh, liked the video. <coughs> Let's break it to a thousand because there's a thousand of you. And so um, um, I'm going to wrap this up right now. I'm going to see you guys again tomorrow. And um, uh, lastly, before I let you go, if the Lord puts on your heart to give, uh, we're going to pin um, Graceland or Everett. Could you guys uh, change the links when I mentioned the links, when I mentioned to change the links uh, for giving? You guys can give. Um, wow, Tony gave $500 on YouTube. Bro, I see you've been following the streams. I see um, every day I see you in, in the chat, man. God bless you, bro. Um, thank you so much for your extravagant, generous um, gift. Um, Primrose, thank you for also your gift. Um, um, somebody gifted 10 Vlad Subject memberships. Oh, wow. Um, Mary, thank you also for giving. And um, Adal Mendez, thank you for your giving. Flex, thank you for your giving. Patience, thank you for your giving. I love these names. Man, it's like prophetic word from God. Patience. <laughs> Special I was talking about today. Lydia, thank you also for your gift. Lisa, thank you for your gift. And um, HGD, thank you for your gift um, as well. Um, Tenisa, thank you um, for giving on YouTube chat. And so you can give through Cash App, through Venmo, and you can give through PayPal or become a partner with our ministry. Um, we just had a partners meeting this week actually, and you know, we shared that we translated um, eight books last year. We also have um, have about five or six in the queue right now, and we giving we're giving these books away um, to other nations, uh, printing sometimes, sending them to jails, uh, especially the break free book, and uh, the fasting ones. So many people were able to download it, and because not everybody can afford to buy it, and so and we really want to um, use this ministry because people give to be able to give back. 
and to um, give to uh, the body of Christ. We have uh, courses, um, a lot of courses on my website. I'm going to release a new one next month by God's grace on marriage. And so all of them also are available free of charge. I think we have about 50,000 students on our Vlad School. So make sure you check it out. And a lot of reading plans, over a million four hundred thousand subscriptions on YouVersion Bible app. And so um, God is really just, just expanding um, the influence of this ministry. And one of our secrets is that um, we, don't, we don't charge for things. Uh, we, we give things away. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I am self-published author and I ask you guys unapologetically to leave a review on Amazon uh, because I don't have the, the luxury of having a company that, you know, um, that sells books for me and stuff. So you guys are my, uh, my audience and, and my ultimate goal is to really help people just, just get deeper with the Lord. And God is, is going to take care of me. He's going to provide for me. But, um, I need to take care of um, the spiritual climate of God's people. That's what He's leading me to do. And so appreciate you guys giving, appreciate you guys praying, standing in the gap with us. Um, Caroline, thank you for your donation as well. Amen. Amen. So guys, I will see you again tomorrow, all right, at 9 o'clock. Um, and um, may God richly bless you, persevere. If you get discouraged, go rewatch this video, watch the previous videos. Um, because we're kind of all in the same mood, okay you you will really you feel that anointing you feel that even impartation that encouragement and so which is one of the reasons you know um i am doing this to strength to kind of speak from my heart to yours and to encourage you like if i would have 20 minutes to spend with you i would you know like that's what i would do is i would just encourage you and that's so because i'm not able to do that with every person but because of live stream we're able to do it with every person at the same time um you find that encouragement that's what i do when i when i fast and i struggle with fasting it's always been my my secret sauce i would say and that is to watch messages and books on sacrifice or fasting so like uh, a lot of messages before I even had my own messages on fasting I would you know during a 30 day or 40 day I would just turn on a message on, on fasting I would just turn on a stream on fasting and it, that would just kind of yeah let's go don't give up you got it you know you're not alone in this there's a light at the end of the tunnel even if it's gonna be after 20 days or 40 days but still right now I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel I told my wife yesterday <laughs> I was like mentally I already calculated it's seven it's seven, three days. So seven times three days is 21 days. And she's like, that, that's not helpful. I was like, I know. I actually, I'm not even thinking about the end. I'm just, I'm just enjoying every single day in the presence of God. And I, you know, it's a privilege to choose to fast. Mm. I'm going to share something with you guys. The difference between starvation and fasting is starvation is controlled by your environment and fasting is controlled by your decision the fact that you are able to fast um, that's a privilege that means that you're healthy probably you have food and you can deny yourself of that and that's a don't, don't take that lightly don't don't take that as a don't take that for granted there are people who are fasting around the world today children but not because they chose to fast, but because the environment chose for them. And we have to help and alleviate hunger and starvation around the world. But when, when you do fast, it, it's a privilege because you are voluntarily doing that. Nobody's making you to do that. Um, and you're choosing to prioritize your spiritual walk over your physical. Um, your body's still gonna die one day, turn to ashes. And so, you're becoming more eternally minded, more spiritual minded. Your spirit is kind of becoming stronger, um, releasing uh, that that anointing is being released through you, and so it's it's, it's incredible. Don't, don't give up. Don't 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 quit. Uh, God is on your side. Amen. Um, Paul, um, uh, God bless you, Paul uh, Woodruff. Thank you for your donation, as well as Angel and um, Anointed One. Come on, somebody. I love these names. Millie, thank you for your donation as well. Amen, guys. Um, God bless you again. And um, don't forget to hit thumbs up, leave a review, 
uh, on Amazon. It would just mean a lot to us if you leave a review on Amazon for the book. Um, if you have bought one or if you have downloaded one on the website, you can still go on Amazon and leave the review. We will much appreciate it. Thank you guys and have a wonderful day.